Being a landscape designer, I'm keen to see how other designers have handled difficult sites. So I'm off to visit a property, which I'm told had a number of challenges. Not too long ago, this was a relatively steep sloping site, making the backyard unusable for the new owners and their young family. They wanted the landscaper to create areas where their young children could play, and they could entertain outside. I asked landscaper Stuart Girl to comment on the design philosophy behind this garden. When the owner moved in, it was an L-shaped section. Um, and this space where we are now, it was just a big slope. So from the back of the section all the way down to the deck here, it was just one big gradual slope all the way down. The designer created three levels or platforms where different kinds of activity can happen. A play lawn for the boys, another transition lawn where they can also play, and then the area around the pool. It looks really simple, but like everything that looks simple, there's a lot of work that goes behind it. So to get these levels right, they had to work out where these retaining walls needed to sit. They also used a cut and fill technique. So by bringing the retaining wall up here, they were able to pull the soil from the back of the site forwards and compact it and keep it on site. Taking soil off site can be very expensive. And on this property, it was made doubly difficult by the fact that the owner's house completely blocked any access to the back part of the property. This also made it difficult bringing soil and machinery onto the site. Fortunately, the neighbour's driveway runs along the other side of the fence. They took out a fence panel here, took away a couple of the hedging trees. They were able to actually use that access to get diggers into the site and to get the soil out of the site. So a bit of negotiating? There was a bit of negotiating. Luckily, these owners have got some very understanding and nice neighbours, so it wasn't a problem. Wide timber steps create a sense of space on what is a fairly narrow section and take us from one level to the next. As Stuart said, it's an odd L-shaped site with a bit off to the side up at the very top of the property. I like how the designer has made that space usable. What's really interesting is these small goalposts yep. and the whole thing is the same sort of dimensions as a rugby field for a five-year-old, which is perfect. It is perfect. Um, there's a five-year-old in the house and he loves rugby. So he's up here every day, every morning before school, up here kicking the ball, loves to play rugby. Yeah, which he wouldn't have been doing before. No, on that sloping section, that the yeah. children never came up here. So now we've got this nice level playing field. So they kick the rugby ball and have a lot of fun. The designer has also come up with some clever but simple ways of making this area private. Trellis on the top of the fences and grizzle in ears with their lower branches removed. So now they're going to be allowed to grow up and then have a nice hedge covering the top of the trellis giving us some nice coverage. There's another raised level in this area which may come into play as the children grow too big for the rugby pitch. The plan for the future here is possibly put a sleep out on where you can actually come outside into this nice quiet place. You've got great views out and you've got another room for the house as well. The lawns on all the level areas help tie the property together and provide some interesting spaces where the owner's children can play. Pretty good lawn here for a site that's you know been excavated so extensively. It is obviously when you do the cut and fill, you expose a lot of the subsoil and the clays, so they all come to the top. So it's about putting those as low down as we can, and then getting some good soil back in so that they can grow good grass back on top and grow good plants. That gap in the fence enabled the landscaping team to bring in some good quality topsoil for the lawns and garden beds. They've got cooch, which is a really good hard-wearing grass. It's a family lawn, so it's really good for the kids. They can run on it. It's going to stand up to that high traffic. Definitely. Takes a lot of wear and tear. With so many different levels and spaces and lots of different hard surfaces, this garden could easily feel very fragmented. But it doesn't. The designer has softened those hard objects and cleverly linked all the spaces together by using a simple palette of plants and repeating them throughout the whole garden. The grizzolinias are used in several places for hedging. Lamandra tannica, a very hardy and sculptural grass, is planted extensively on the banks and between the rocks. The pukas are used as feature plants and will grow to provide some height and strong form and the always reliable dietes provide swathes of green and pops of white when they're in flower. It's great to have a good planting plan. So having a good planting plan in place, it means you know where the plants are going, what plants you're going to use, um, and you can actually look at how that's going to achieve softening of the landscape and actually pull all these different areas and materials together. Yeah, because that's the trick. When you walk around it, it feels seamless. It does. It doesn't matter whether you're coming through the gate to the paving, onto the deck, up into the, um, the garden areas and the, the lawns. Everything just flows nicely. There's nothing that looks out of place. It just all looks really nice and natural. <laughs>